Hi, I'm Jen Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this, the sixth video in our series about Alpha Zero's opening strategies. In this video, we're going to look at the way that Alpha Zero handles the black side of the Carlsbad. And we've got two videos on this, um, and Alpha Zero handles it very aggressively. We're also going to feature, we've got a twist for you, we're going to feature a game by a Dutch amateur player after reading the book Game Changer. Yes, uh, so it was um, a Dutch amateur called uh, Wim van der Wijk who published a, a lovely article on his uh, website, uh, Journalist and Schaker, um, explaining how he was uh, inspired to play a, a great game after reading uh, uh, our book and after uh, seeing one of the games that Alpha Zero had played in this line. The game was called Rook's Pawn Symphony, and we're going to show that game that Alpha Zero played, and then also Vim's game. And thank you to Vim for uh, letting us use his game. Yeah, it was. Um, he wrote the article in uh, in Dutch, so um, so it's lovely to be able to share this um, with uh, with English speaking uh, chess players. Okay, let's dive into the game. This position shows the Carlsbad pawn structure. It's a very common pawn structure and it arises if white plays c takes d5 and black answers e takes d5 in the opening. And this is considered a way for white to play with a, a solid position, a safe position, and maybe a small edge. And a typical pawn uh, plan for white is to do the minority attack and that's where you launch up your b pawn and a pawn try and get your b pawn to b5 like this um, and then you so black might take with the a pawn white takes and you end up with a pawn structure like this where black has a backward c pawn and that c pawn can become weak and so white can gang up on the c pawn and the really nice thing about it for white is that if white manages to win that c pawn then very often the d-pawn can be lost too. And so white plays for a win in the end game. So that uh, looks like a, a very safe way for white to play. What could possibly go wrong? Well, um, against uh, Stockfish in, uh, in their match, um, Alpha Zero uh, with black was showing some very aggressive strategies. And um, one of the, the, the most beautiful games that, that it played, um, actually, and uh, we put in our book, and uh, it's the game that inspired uh, uh, Wim van der Weyck, and that was um, the Rook's Pawn Symphony. So let's take a look at that game first. We're going to point out the moments that uh, that Wim also pointed out that really inspired him, and uh, and then afterwards we're going to see uh, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, at Wim's game. And of course, you can tell from the name that it's going to involve the Rook's Pawn, but it doesn't just involve one Rook's Pawn. Watch both the Black Rook's Pawns. Exactly. Exactly. And um, actually, um, um, uh, what we're going to see is uh, something. I don't know whether you've seen the video that we did with uh, King's Crusher on um, uh, games played by uh, Alpha Zero and uh, and Leela Zero. But uh, in that game, uh, we featured uh, the Rook's Pawn decoy, in which uh, a Rook's Pawn on the Queen side decoys away the opponent's pieces for an attack on the King side. Well, this strategy is quite similar. So, following the standard moves for the uh, Queen's Gambit declined. Um, bishop d3, h6. Um, this used to be considered to be a, um, um, a bad move actually for black, um, but um, recently uh, top players have been experimenting with it. Kramnik's played it a, a, a few times. Um, and the idea of it is that simply that um, this pawn on h7 um, is no longer hanging um, uh, for the battery of the of the queen on c2 and bishop on d3. So it means that black can play this move very easily, exchanging off the um uh the bishops and relieving that pin on the uh on the um h4 d8 diagonal. On the other hand though, um it's exchanging a, a black piece that might attack the white queen side. So you'd really sort of feel that uh, uh the, the white king side rather. So you might really feel that this is um this is actually going to reduce black's um, um attacking potential. So Stockfish plays first of all in the centre. It's sort of hinting at playing uh, e3 to e4, um, but soon it decides that um, it would rather uh, play the minority attack and push uh, on the uh, on the queen side. So Alpha Zero gets its pieces ready, 
Um, and now we get the first interesting uh, uh, moment here, uh, the first crucial moment that, uh, that also inspired Vim. Um, H5. Indeed, this is the way that Alpha Zero always tries to uh, to start kingside attacks. And that pawn, if it's uh, left unchecked, it'll move all the way to h3 and um, force the white pawn to move to g3 when a square like f3 is uh, is very, very weak. And of course, this knight on e6, perfectly placed to come into g5 and then to f3. Um, so Stockfish plays h3 just to stop the advance of the h-pawn. Um, g6, a bit of consolidating here. Um, Alpha Zero just going to, just making its position more tidy actually, uh, taking away any back rank mate threats and also preparing to move the king to, uh, to g7. And here, Stockfish, um, um, we talked about this in the, in, in the book, but, um, what Stockfish realizes is that, um, a move like b5, um, Black's got, well, quite a few different possibilities. Um, a plan like this actually is, is very decent for, um, uh, for Black. Um, after d takes c5, um, knight takes c5, or even queen takes c5, um, black does has an have an isolated pawn on uh, on d5, but um, white's queen side is very loose. Um, actually, white would now really want the pawn to be on b2, supporting that knight on c3. Here, black's going to line up with rook to c8, knight coming into e4, and very good counterplay. So, stockfish... Um, well, understands that uh, b5 isn't really going to give it any clear advantage. And so what Stockfish does, um, it waits. It plays around. It waits for a better opportunity. And of course, uh, it looks, I suppose, kind of passive. But always there's this enormous amount of calculation, just waiting for the moment where you misplace your pieces and the break is suddenly good. Um, but um, uh, and of course, you know, I, I think uh, the assumption is always that, you know, white's safe. Um, if anyone's going to be pressing for an edge, it's going to be white. But Alpha Zero starts to come now and um, uh, puts this knight on e4 um, and Stockfish removes it. Um, so Black's no longer got uh, an outpost on, on e4, which is a negative. On the other hand, a pawn's gone close to the king side and, um, you know, eyeing this f3 square. And, um, well, there's also this knight on f4, which is nicely placed, but could also be a target if you're that way inclined. Um, h4, and now g5. And now, now the, uh, the attack starts. Um, and what you notice is, uh, what has Alpha Zero done here? Well, this moving the pawn to h4, it's fixed this pawn on h3, which means when black plays g5 to g4, well, that pawn is, uh, is a, is a fixed target. And if it moves, we're going to bring our knight in and, uh, and attack the king side. It's very, very dangerous. Um, and this was uh, another moment that inspired uh, Vim. Just um, Alpha Zero puts its king. We oft we've often seen this, mm. and we, we mention it in it the book. It moves it up the board a bit, so it's putting all the way forward on h6, and it does seem to often move it a couple of ranks up the board when it thinks it's safe there. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's a number of uh, classic games with that. And uh, here, of course, the king's on the h file, freeing the g file for the black rook to uh, to push g5 to g4. And here it comes. And now Stockfish strikes with its break. Um, obviously feels um, Black's weakened itself, so now is the moment to play my break and I'm going to get lots of extra chances. Um, and now another inspiring moment and a real, a real testament to how strong Alpha Zero is in, um, in getting the most, making the most of the activity in its, uh, in its position. Activity that you just often wouldn't spot yourself. Um, we know Alpha Zero is not going to play a takes b5 here because we know this game is rook's pawn symphony <laughs> exactly exactly it plays a5 and um uh and you'll see that uh, that vin was inspired by this and i can imagine i mean this mm. is really it looks nice having a passed pawn there it does it does i mean the point is of course that it, i mean in principle that pawn is lost i mean white could play um rook c3 and rook b3 and line up but you know whilst white is busy over there capturing that pawn. Well, look at what black's going to do on the king side, you know, g5 mm. to g4. So it's the decoy again. It's the decoy again. I mean, it's, uh, and th the point is, you know, if, if white doesn't get rid of that decoy, then look what that pawn is doing. It's, it's, you know, the queen on a2 is having to blockade it. You know, it, it's, uh, it's tying up a whole queen, you know, which, uh, is obviously going to cause some pain on the other side, you know, when there's no white queen to defend the king side. 
So, uh, and we've often seen this. It's another thing that we uh, that we uh, explain uh, in some depth in uh, in the book about um, how Alpha Zero seems to understand much better how to get its queen active than the stockfish. Stockfish often ending up in uh, with with a very passive queen in its position. So, um, well, the game continued. Rook C three, G four takes. Knight F four, H three. Um, a very nice, uh, a very nice idea. Um, if we go um, uh, G takes H three, uh, then a knight H two check is uh, is quite nasty. The knight's coming into F three, then an awful lot of threats are um, are occurring. And of course, you know the king very nice and safe here. The H file is closed. There's a white pawn on it, so very very nice safe king. So Stockfish played G three, really trying to keep things uh, closed, keep things tight. And now, again, this is um, a very typical alpha zero. The g-file is closed now. White's played g3. No waiting around. The rook is redeployed to a new post. And this new post is rather unpleasant because um, it's attacking the bishop on c4, and the rook on c3 is pinned behind it. Um, so there's some real, there's some real tactical problems uh, uh, here. King g1, h2, king g2, and again, redeployment. Um, the g-file is closed, so um, that's now safe for, for the black king. He's not going to do anything more on the g-file. But what black is doing is freeing the h-file for the rook to push this, this other h-pawn. You can see the h-pawns are sort of having a race yeah. here because, uh, you know, first of all, it was the a-pawn that was winning, and now it's the, uh, the h-pawn that's, uh, that's winning. Um, so Stockfish tries to um, at least swap off rooks. Uh, the only problem is, is that um, the more rooks that get swapped off, the stronger this this decoy a pawn becomes. So um, uh, a little shimmy just to uh, threaten queen b two and then come back. And it's already very hard to give white any advice at all about what uh, what it should do. Um, the only question I had, you know, when I was playing through the game was, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how you how you finish this off really. Um, you know, where is the weakness in White's position? Um, he's tied down, but uh, with that kingside structure, it looks pretty solid. Um, but Alpha Zero comes up with a very nice uh, a very nice idea. And here already, you know, the all my engines are getting very very pessimistic. They're already seeing what's coming. But uh, for me, I was a little bit. Uh, I was a little bit clueless uh, until it actually happened. Rook takes f4 and bishop f5. And um, the idea is to um, to get this move e3 in and possibly to come in with a queen as well once you've weakened this um, this white king side. Um, so Stockfish went rook c1, queen b6, knight f2 check, knight g4 check. Um, so both the rook's pawns are gone now. Both the rook's pawns have gone, but um, but now the rook's pawn has gone. The h file is open. Actually, the king's even more exposed. And after king g two, queen d four, um, Stockfish resigned. Uh, queen takes d five is threatened. Queen f two check is threatened. And um, a move like queen a one will, at the very least, uh, knight e three check is huge. You're gonna you can even exchange off queens and then pick up the uh, the bishop, and you've got uh, a huge material advantage. So that was this Rook's Pawn Symphony and um, an absolutely beautiful game. And I think, especially in the context of, think normally how these games proceed with white playing for a little edge and playing hundreds and hundreds of moves. And here simply, uh, you know, in, uh, in 50 moves, uh, you know, uh, Stockfish has really been uh, taken apart by a, by a huge kingside attack. So let's have a, now, let's have a look now at, um, at um, uh, what happened with... Uh, uh, with Vim because it's really very striking. So Vim was black um, and uh, the white player was uh, Guido Wagenforde. So the game proceeded as follows. This was a, a, another Queen's Gambit decline, slightly different variation, but we get into our Carlsbad variation. And I mean, if anyone plays the Queen's Gambit declined, I mean, it's really, I think this is, this is, this is gold for, uh, for you because, uh, you can always get this structure, especially if white, um, doesn't have anything specific against the line that you, that you're playing. Uh, playing this is a very safe and normal way for white to play. Um, and it is supposed to be just a, a safe advantage. So you see uh, again uh, uh, Vim playing the same plan with uh, with h6 and knight h5. White's played it a little bit differently. The knight's on f3, but that's not really uh, um, a very big difference. Queen c2, 
Knight b6. That's uh, Vimp said. Yeah, I put my knight on on b6 rather than uh, than e6. But it's a pretty good square actually. Um, Ulf Anderson uh, um, uh, played a few games where where he put the knight on b6 like this. Uh, the idea simply is that if um, if White plays uh, b4, then this knight's always got a very nice square to aim for on c4. So it does um, make White think twice about uh, about playing the uh, the minority attack. So regrouping the knight, very alpha zero, excellent. Uh, bringing the knight back from a uh, from its uh, offside position back into the towards the center, and white played b4 uh, anyway, a6, a4, and bishop e6. Was this a tournament game? Um, I think this was a, a, a club, uh, a, a club match. So um, um, after rook e1, rook e8, knight d2. Um, so white's um, covering the square c4 and maybe looking to, to play the knight round b3 to c5. That's quite a typical plan. Because once you get the knight onto c5, this plan with b5 feels even more attractive. Um, and here, Vim played <laughs> h5. Exactly. The move we know and love. The move we know and love. And uh, I, I mean, it is a very nice, it's a very nice plan because it, it does force white to think about my goodness, you know, um, I was thinking about just uh, grinding quietly on the queen side and now I've got to think about my king side. So um, white played bishop f5. Um, it's a um, it's a safe move because um, you're swapping off a piece that's pointing towards the king's side. So you're hoping to uh, to relieve the pressure in that way. Um, and played h3. Um, so Vim again, would you, just seeing it's it's very very mm. typical g6 again. And here b5. So white plays the uh, the desired break. It's hoping to swap off all the queenside pawns, leave black with the pawns on c6 and d5, and just grind away. That knight, of course, is coming round to d3. So uh, if there's a pawn on c6 only, that knight can aim at c5 and blockade it. Or also even go to, into e5. So it's looking like black can create a past a pawn here. Indeed. From our knowledge of the previous game. From our knowledge of the previous game. And indeed, this is what Vim did and uh, really played it with huge energy um, because um, that pawn went all the way, all the way into a3. And it really is, um, you know, it, it's distracting. I mean, you know, White's got to, uh, um, you know, White's really got to, to do something about it. I, I do wonder whether whether his opponent was expecting, though, after this pawn has been pushed to a3, that there was that the, the attack was going to start on the other side. I mean, that's uh, it's wonderful stuff. It's just like Alpha Zero. And after here, yeah, Vim also mentioned this move, King H6. Hmm. You know, defending just uh, the defending G the pawn, defending the G pawn, and and, and uh, freeing the G file for the uh, for the rook. Fantastic stuff. And again, um, this is very similar, you know, um, bring the knight onto e4, bringing a pawn close to the king side. And then there's a, uh, the pawn shoved all the way to up to a2 this time, tying down a rook. And then the knight comes onto d5, uh, and b6. And here Vim had a, had a few regrets. He, he, um, he played g4, which was maybe a little bit too hasty. Um, once he said, uh, of course, alpha zero would have played h4 here, which, uh, is, uh, is, is probably uh, would 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 have been a good move. I mean, there's uh, Black really does stand uh, very well in this position. It's it's fan been fantastic strategy up till now. Um, yeah, Vim's uh, G4 and G3 was just um, um, a little bit wild there, and things got quite um, got quite unclear in uh, in time trouble from now on. But eventually, um, uh, well, that this um, uh, restricted king in the end uh, paid. I'll just show you the move. So there was uh, it was um, I think both players were quite short of time. So uh, you know these sort of things can happen but it was very uh it was very very uh nice and i mean the the um uh this rook came into b6 and then rook into b1 and uh and actually this weak white king side pays in the end queen c2 and rook takes f1 and uh well if uh, king takes f1 then knight takes e3 check wins the house wins the house um i mean yeah, I mean, thanks very much to Vim for allowing us to share this. I mean, it was a, it was a, a really beautiful game, you know, uh, from from uh, from Vim in terms of the uh, the strategy. And White played it, you know, White played it well too. That's that's the great thing. But um, but this really active strategy was obviously you know very hard to deal with. And uh, and obviously as White, you know, if you set things up looking for um, a nice bit of control, um, it can be quite shocking to um, to be confronted with a, a huge attack where um, first of all you're getting distracted on the queen side, and then the opponent is uh, is piling through on the um, on the king side. And um, and of course, I mean, always a real pleasure to show this Rook Spawn Symphony game because it's uh, it is one of Alpha Zero's best, and it's really uh, you know one of our uh, one of our favourites.
It was really lovely to show a game that one of our readers had played that resembled an Alpha Zero game. So if any other readers have games that they think resemble Alpha Zero, then please let us know. We'd Absolutely. Love to see it. Absolutely. That's uh, that's uh, this, this was really fun to do, so, and we'd love to do more of these. Okay, so uh, thanks very much. Keep on watching. We've got quite a few more videos planned.